This camera right here is the brand new long-awaited Sony a6700 my friends and the real question is obviously is it actually any good? I mean could this be the perfect APS-C camera? Well by the end of this video you'll know exactly that and also if it might not, you know, be worth your pretty little pennies. All right, so let's start by taking a look at the build quality and what it looks like. As you can see, it has some improvements from the previous models, especially the A6400, that's the camera that I'm so familiar with. And one of them is this bigger grip. And I like this a whole lot. It feels really good in the hand and when you like uh, wielding the cameras, it's uh, nice. Also, if you do come from the A6400, you will see that it now has a big a battery. One of these, you know, big batteries. You can imagine that I have it in my hand. I actually forgot it's empty here, but it's uh, bigger than the old ones that uh, the, you know, A6400 had. Now, one more thing, it has the very angle LCD screen. Oh, yes. On previous models, they had this, you know, weird flip screen like this and, and you know, the A6300 had like, you could flip it tiny and then the A6400, you can flip it a little bit more as this. It was garbage in my opinion. This is what we want. You can vlog easily, see what you are doing. Also, when you're taking, you know, shots that are really, really low, you can now see the screen and what you're doing then. Love this, such a good improvement. Now than that, I think it feels really good and sturdy in the hand. It has an SD card slot right here when you open it up like this, if I'm able you know, to open it with my fat hands. And uh, then you can uh, see a USB-C, a headphone jack, and also a HDMI's and a, you know, uh, yo, sorry, this is the headphone jack and the up here, this is for if you have a microphone. Now, another difference is that the record button is now up here. It's not on this weird place where it used to be down here, like this a whole lot. And then it has two wheels, one where you can change the aperture and another one you can change the shutter speed. Do appreciate this a whole lot. Now, another thing I really much like with this camera is that not only can you like quickly switch between photo, video and SNQ, which is like standard now on Sony cameras, but also you have three different slots for memory recall. That means that you can have multiple different settings saved and you can quickly switch between them when you're out shooting. Then you can also see a C1 button, a C2 button that you can bind if you like, and the rest feels really similar to the previous version. All in all, it's slightly bigger, but feels very good in the hand. Now, that that is out of the way, what does it pack inside? Like, what is it actually capable of? What are the, you know, specs upgrades of this little piece right here? So, spec-wise, there have been made some significant updates on this camera compared to the previous models, and also some really cool, you know, features that will go over. Now, let's start to talk about the sensor. The Sony a6700 has a 26 megapixel back illuminated CMOS sensor with a brand new Bionz CXR processing engine, and also a new AI processing unit. And to me, and in my opinion, that makes this piece quite an impressive hybrid camera. And yes, it can film 4K 120 frames per second. We'll touch more on that a little bit later. Now it does have a high ISO sensitivity and dynamic range. When you're filming in video, you can go up to 32,000 ISO. And when you're taking stills, you can pump the ISO up to 102,400. That's a lot of ISO, you know. It's also equipped with a five axis in-body optical image stabilization, which is a huge update coming from the A6400. Now I never touched the A6600. I think that had like some sort of uh, image stabilization, but in this camera, it's quite good. Now the color science has also been hugely improved. On the previous models, especially the A6300, but also the A6400, the colors were never something that, uh, you know, us Sony users were proud of. Everybody was also Canon this, Canon, 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 Canon. But now, with this camera, they've improved the whole lot. It's basically the same color science as you get on the Sony A7R5, which is an incredible camera. On top of that, it's filled with features such as auto exposure algorithm that detects the skin area and the faces, and then it controls the exposures accordingly. There are also some other nerdy things. I throw up a slide here and you can pause and read it by yourself. I like all of these updates a lot. Another update I really appreciate and all of us that like still photography is that now in this camera you can capture lossless compressed raw files. Now what 
Without a doubt, one of the most exciting updates, especially for all of us that like Sony APS-C, is that now you can film 4K 120 frames per second. Finally, we get that creamy, creamy slow motion. I mean, this camera that I'm filming on right now, the a7 IV, it cannot film that, but this little camera, it can. However, there is a slight crop when you're filming in 120 frames per second, but if you do 60 frames per second 4K, there is no crop at all. Now, if you think that I look a little bit rougher than usual, and you may be thinking, why are you not in your studio, my friend? Then it's because I I currently am like driving around Norway and living in my van. This is my van and I'm here with uh, my, you know, girlfriend and our two kids, a one year old and a two and a half year old. So it's incredibly intense. So if I feel a little bit tired or look like I haven't shaved my beard for a long time, which I haven't, or maybe that I only been taking baths, you know, in different lakes and whatnot, then it's because that's exactly what's happening, you know, uh, not a lot of sleep, a lot of fun and uh, really intense at the moment. But I'm trying to do my best because these videos need to come, you know. So yeah, if you could smack that like button for me, then it would be really much appreciated, like really, really much. Really much. Smack it. Smack that like button. Now, another thing we also get in this camera is active mode image stabilization for even more stable footage. And then we also get eye autofocus during the clear image zoom and also real time tracking for movies. On top of all that, this camera is also equipped with the auto framing feature that you find on the Sony ZV-E1, which is a feature that I think is pretty sick and I've enjoyed it a whole lot on my Sony ZV-E1 camera. Cool to have it here too. Now, these are like the main features that piqued my interest the most but it is filled with a lot of other cool things that comes from a different you know camera Sony has and you can easily just read up on it but it's there are a lot of cool things in it now one more thing I want to touch on though is that the autofocus on this camera is absolutely incredible is this new autofocus that Sony has that is powered by AI. It's super fast and accurate and you can also mess with the sensitivity so you can make it really smooth when it transitions so it doesn't get, you know, jerky and all that. And the camera can now also recognize a bunch of different objects depending on what you are shooting. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. I think this autofocus system is incredibly good. I mean, Sony is just always upping its game. I thought that their autofocus was good even on the A6400, you know, and the previous camera, but they've just taken it to a whole nother level when it comes to autofocus. And this camera is equipped with that. All right, so why would you choose an APS-C camera over, let's say, on full frame? Like, what's the advantage of going APS-C? So for the starters, it would be the price. Most manufacturers, when they make the APS-C cameras, they tend to be cheaper than, for example, the full frame cameras. And another big a factor and that's really important for me is the size. APS-C cameras, they mostly like often tend to be much smaller and more compact. And to me, that's really important. I'm often on the go and I like to hike and I'm carrying a lot with me, especially now that I have kids, I have them on my backpack, I have food, I have sometimes tents. So it's really a crucial thing that the gear I have is lightweight and compact and still, you know, performs well. And this fits that category perfectly. All right, so with all that being said, then what is my honest opinion of this camera and how have I liked it after now been using it for a few weeks? So for starters, if we talk about photography, then I've enjoyed a lot the updates from the previous models. This is definitely a better camera in all aspects and I like that a whole lot. The grip is something that I enjoy. I enjoy that it's bigger. It feels good when I'm taking photos with it. And also the quality is nothing that I'm, you know, uh, I can complain about honestly. And keep in mind that the photos that I've been throwing up and showing you, these are just some simple JPEGs and not even the highest quality of JPEGs. The reason I'm not showing you raw files is that, that at the time of the recording, Lightroom doesn't support the raw files from this new camera, so I could, haven't been able to import them and edit them. So this is just the simple JPEGs, I probably haven't even, you know, added them a whole lot. And before I forget, I also want to throw in here that um, it's been really easy to operate the camera. Now, not the many I've been, uh, Sony user and like accused of being a great Sony salesman and a Sony fanboy to the death, which kind of I am. I like these camera systems a whole lot. So, so I know how to use it inside out, but still it, it's, it's really easy if you've never been used before. It's, it's pretty simple camera. That's what I want to say. And for video, it's a huge update from the camera that I know so much, the Sony A6400. Like I've used the Sony A6400, A6300 so much that like, 
the buttons don't even all work on them anymore. I've hammered on those cameras. So I know them inside out. And now being able to like test out finally an APS-C camera in the A600, you know, category, that is an actual update. It's been really enjoyable. I like the 4K 120 FPS, although it's a slight crop. And I do want to throw in here that the footage, it's also 10-bit footage. Woo! We like that! And one thing I haven't touched on is that the screen, it's a touch screen. And you can like just tap on the subject that you want and it will uh, automatically track that subject with focus wise. Which is insane, I like that. Just click on it and now it is in focus. I mean, it's doing everything for you nowadays. It's becoming too easy to be good at creating videos and, and photos. Now, is it a perfect camera and totally, you know, flawless? There are no flaws to it. The truth is that Probably not. Um, nothing is perfect in this world and uh, there might probably be something that somebody thinks is uh, this is not too good with this uh, camera. The truth is that I haven't, you know, I haven't had it that long. I've only had it for a few weeks and in that time I just haven't found anything in particular that I've been like, this sucks. <laughs> so it could be uh, the price. Price is often something that people get a little bit emotional about and it could be that. I also have to have a, like, uh, be honest with you that where I am at right now, I've been here for quite some time, there's no connection here. So I, at the time of the recording, I can't remember exactly what the price was, but if I remember correctly, it was a little bit like higher than what I expected. Um, so that could be one thing. But nevertheless, if you are in search for a small lightweight camera that like does its job, then this camera, the Sony A6700, it's definitely a camera to consider. And if you do enjoy like Sony APS-C cameras or just APS-C cameras in general, I would highly recommend that you check out this lens right here. All of the videos and photos that I've been showing you that are shot with this camera have been taken on the Sony 16 to 55 millimeter f 2.8. It's by far one of my all time favorite lenses to use on the Sony APS-C system. And next you should watch the review so you know better, you know what this lens is capable of doing. And you can click this video right here.